I'm Martin West, the head chef at the Stables restaurant here at Oaklands College. And one of the most common questions I get asked as a chef is what makes for good quality food? And we always say the staple answer of locally produced and good quality produce. That doesn't really mean much to people, but here at Oaklands College it means the world to us. Because what a lot of people don't know is we've got a lot of local produce on site that we're going to take you through here today to try and explain to you uh, what it's all about based around the St Albans Food Festival. So we're going to go and visit our farm, our allotments, our orchard, we're going to bring it all together today to make it into one of my favourite lunch dishes we produce here at the Stables restaurant. Hi, hi guys, uh, my name's Colin, we're here at Oakland's College in uh, St Albans um, with our Saddleback pigs. Um, so these girls were born here in March this year. Um, the sales around the corner in the fall. Um, so these guys, these guys were born here, um, looked after by our students doing uh, the animal care courses and the agriculture courses. Um, so saddlebacks are a traditional uh, British feed, uh, breed, um, bred for their meat. Um, very good, high quality meat. Um, we feed them on a high quality uh, pig nut, which is full of fibre and full of protein. The fibre gives them lots of energy. The protein helps them put on uh, lots of muscle and fat. Um, these girls will stay here for six months or so whilst they're growing, um, and then their time will come to go off to go into the food tray. Um, it's really important whilst they're here that they, they have a good quality of life. Um, Hence, really good feed, nice big enclosure, they're all reared outdoors, so all nice and healthy and happy, and hopefully that transfers to the, to the taste of the meat as well. Um, so as I say, yeah, they'll, they'll stay here for a few more months, putting on some weight, not quite big enough yet, um, but about twice the size, and then they'll, they'll go off um, to end up on your plate. Hi, I'm Kev Speed, lecturer at Oaklands College. I'm here today to demonstrate cutting up one of our Oaklands pigs. Um, I'm a chef butcher. Butchers in butcher shops do it differently. A lot of it's done by bandsaw now, but I'm going to show you the traditional methods that chefs used to do. Um, it is a bit of a dying art, because as I say, most things come in nowadays. We're very blessed at Oakland College to still be able to obtain the whole uh, pigs and lambs. So I'm going to show you how to cut this up and this is how we show our students as well. I think this was a 40 kilo pig. So the pork chops on this are going to be quite large. So basically, you need to cut between the bones. Like so. As I say, they're going to be very, very big pork chops. So I'm going to cut one off. Be very careful where you chop. Okay, so pork chop with the bone, and I'm going to show you how to French trim it. So we've got a beautiful eye of meat there, uh, minimal fat because it's the loin. So um, you need to treat this like a steak. Skin it. It's up to you. I, I actually like to eat it with the skin on and everything as well. Once again, I'm utilizing every part of the animal out of respect. Cut that off. French trim. So basically you're trimming the bone down. We're scraping it to clean it. This avoids it burning, depending on what the cooking method is. Okay. Trim off that little bit there. Just a little bit of bone cut off there, and you have a beautiful pork chop ready for grilling pan frying 
how however Martin's going to cook it later. Thank you for watching. So here we are, we're going to bring everything together. We're going to take all the things we've had from the cottage grounds, from our allotments to our farmyard, and we're going to create something really fresh and a really lovely dish, especially at lunchtime. So what we've got here is we've got a couple of chicories from our allotments, and we're going to braise these chicories, okay? Really, really simple way of doing them, but a really nice way of getting them the bitterness out. We're going to cook them in a bit of orange juice, soy sauce, and some juniper berries. First thing we're going to do is going to get some lovely brown colour onto these chicories. I'm just going to do that with some butter and seasoning with quite a bit of sugar. We're going to almost caramelise these chicories in a caramel. Just like I said, we'll give it a lovely sweetness and offset the bitterness that you can find often in chicories. We still want a little bit of that bitterness from it though, because what that's going to do is going to help when we go to eat the pork and the fattiness of the pork. It's all going to come together beautifully. So I'm just going to cook our chicories off in the butter with just a healthy bit of caster sugar sprinkled over them. And like I said, what that's going to create is a lovely little caramel toffee almost, which will cook the chicories and give it that really deep brown colour. Once we've got the colour on there, we're going to add the orange juice with a bit of soy sauce in it. That's going to give it a bit of depth of flavour also. And create these beautiful fresh chicories. This is something otherworldly. So all we've done there is just cut the chicories in half down on their left. And we're looking for a good to them. Okay, so you see the sort of colour we're looking for, that lovely roasted colour onto these chicories, because when they get braised, they're going to get braised in the liquor. So we don't want them to look like they've been boiled, we want them to look like they've been roasted almost in this pan. And all these things, all these components just get brought together so quickly and easily, it's literally done in 15-20 minutes. Lovely. That's what we're sort of looking for, that lovely roasted colour to it. We're just going to pour over our orange juice and our soy sauce and just bring that to a light simmer. Turn it down and then just cover with a cartouche and that's just going to hold that liquid into our pan and just let it get a nice even cook across the chicories. Therefore, we're getting consistency the whole way through. So whilst we're just going to leave there and cook them for about three or four minutes, that's all it's going to take. They're only very, very light, so nice and easy to cook. We're going to crack on with our pork. Now our pork, we've marinated in one of our homemade marinades. So each week we get the students to make effectively mother sauces for the whole week. So we have our barbecue sauce they'll make, they'll make a fresh mayonnaise and all these mother sauces, stocks and so often. Will, uh, will act as the base for a lot of the things that they produce throughout the week. So we've got our lovely pork chop, which Colin's been rearing and Kev went and butchered, and we've marinated it in our barbecue marinade. And we're just gonna grill this bad boy and keep it as simple as possible. Just the barbecue marinade is just gonna give it a bit of depth and added flavor, but we don't wanna take too much away from the flavour of the pork. So we're not going to put any other sauces with it, we're not going to put anything else with it that's going to take away from the flavour of this lovely pork. And we're literally just going to grill it on the pan, on the griddle, uh, to get some lovely colour and crisscross patterns on it. Okay, so we're just going to grill this pork onto the griddle. And it's nothing too complicated here, just a big high heat. So we're searing off and sealing off that meat as quickly as possible so we're not going to lose any of that moisture or any of that beautiful fat and rendering it down too much. We want it just to be sealed off, a lovely crisscross pattern on our colour just to give it the real wow fact when it's on the plate. Okay, so we're going to plate up now guys. There's a few components we've not quite gone through. The first, going to put a lovely 
quinella of smoked mashed potato onto the plate. Now the way we do that is we've got our smoker outside and we smoke the oil beforehand, mix it with the butter and uh, the cream before adding it into the potatoes. And that's just going to add some real depth to the dish and I'm pretty sure we can all agree that smokiness and barbecue go pretty well together. The other thing that goes really well with pork is apples and we've got some golden delicious apples from our orchard which we've turned into a roasted apple and honey puree. And that's just going to sit on there and add a bit of sweetness to our plate again to help get through that fattiness of the pork. Then goes our lovely Oakland's reared barbecue pork chop sitting on top of that mash and then the delicious braised chicories, the orange juice and the soy sauce just on as well. And that's just a real basic lovely fresh lunch dish that you can come to expect to enjoy from here at Oakland's College. Everything done here, everything reared here. Uh, just come over, check it out at lunch, check it out on our Thursday nights. If you want to do the dish at home, we'll put the recipe up as well. But come on down to Oakland's College, check out what we're doing. It's all exciting. Come and get inspired.